Um, first of all, thank you for um, having me out to present to you guys. Um, this is, for those who don't know, this is where I grew up. So, and so I have this big, big, strong ties to Oklahoma City. So this, for me, this is like coming home to present about something I love to do. So uh, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. And this, this looks like a great group. You guys seem to have a pretty big showing, which is awesome. Um, today, I'm going to be talking um, about something that I've been really passionate with about for probably the past three years. It's a project that I've been personally working on, trying to just uh, make better almost every single day, just always constantly trying to, trying to improve on it. Um, and it's going to be, uh, this presentation is going to be Advanced Media Front 2.0. Um, and I'll go into a little bit on why, I why I'm deciding to, to do Advanced Media Front. Um, but before I do that, let me just give you a little bit of an intro. Uh, my name is Travis Tidwell. Um, I am a lead developer at allplayers.com. For those who are not familiar with All Players, um, I just recommend going to the website, allplayers.com. Just check it out. It's a really cool product that we've developed to help group administrators manage teams and get people together in groups that communicate. And it's, it's a really powerful website. Um, my fellow co-worker, Scott Henry, uh, he works with me at All Players. So we got, we got two of us representing. Um, my Drupal uh, user ID is 98581. So, I mean, I've been around probably about five and a half years. Um, started when it was probably about 4.7 is when I started. Initially doing uh, back-end media management. Uh, but from what you're going to see in this presentation, I've kind of shifted towards front-end. Um, my Twitter, I've, six years later, I've actually started just now getting into Twitter, which is kind of unusual. I haven't, didn't even really do it until just recently. But my... For those who want to uh, check me out, I'm Software Gnome on Twitter. So first of all, let's why why am why advanced? Why did I de why am I deciding to talk about advanced media front? Um, the reason is is because there's already there's some people in this room that have already seen my other presentations where I kind of go into a little bit of history on why I decided to write media front, and then I kind of skim the surface and I take an entire hour, kind of going through all the features of media front. Um, <coughs> But one big thing about those presentations is I skim the surface of what MediaFront is actually capable of doing. And I've never really had the medium to go in and dig into some of the really guts and glory of what I really feel is extremely powerful about this product. So what I'd like to do is kind of go into that in this presentation. It's going to be much different if any of you guys have seen the MediaFront presentations online. I'm going to go into some more depth, some more detail, show you some what I consider some really cool stuff that you can do. Um, for those who have not seen those presentations, um, I highly recommend before, uh, you know, I'm actually going to post this online after, after the fact on YouTube. So um, the, if you want to watch the, the intro videos where I kind of skim the surface, they're in present, the, uh, you can go to mediafront.org and it's under presentations. And as I mentioned before, there's a lot about Mediafront 2.0 that people don't know. Um, so let's just uh, go into, let me just kind of just touch base on what I am going to cover. I am still going to give you an intro to the project. I'm not going to completely leave the, the, uh, the people who are not familiar with this project hanging. But keep in mind, I'm going to go really fast through the intro. And also, I'm going to do a fly-through demo and tutorial. And I really mean it when I say fly-through. I'm going to try and get that done in about 15, 20 minutes. Um, while I'm doing that, I'm going to be exposing some changes that I've made to MediaFront in the version 2.0 versus 1.0. And um, a lot of these changes were really kind of stemmed. In fact, uh, a, a guy that's here today, uh, Chris Vanderwater, was in the, one, of the present, one of my very first presentations I gave over MediaFront. And there were a lot of points that he was raising his eyebrows and be like, why did you do it like that? Why did you do it like that? I hate to say you're always right, Chris. But he was right. You don't have to. No, I will. I will. He knows. Yeah, I know. I know. It's like as, as if your head couldn't get any bigger. Yeah. <laughs> totally kidding. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. But you bought, you you shaved your head, so that kind of helps. So, yeah. so it looks a little smaller than it normally looks. Um, so he had some really good suggestions that I decided to um, I, I heed to his advice, and I, I made a lot of big changes to the project that I personally feel have have really put in the project, on, taken it to the next level. I've uh, minified the code, done a lot of really opt great optimizations. I would like to cover a little bit about code architecture on what some of the choices I've made. So if anybody is doing a project that pertains to media, 
and you have to deal with the media front code, I want to kind of show you where things are and where you find and how you can do modifications to do some really cool stuff. <clears throat> that involves creating custom templates. I get this all the time. I want to create a custom template for media. We're going to do that. And also do a, a media event binding. I get a lot of requests, you know, how can I, how can I um, control the media? How do I know what it's doing? And MediaFront actually exposes some really amazing APIs that's standard across all the players, YouTube, Vimeo, HTML5, Flash, all of those. It, it basically commonizes all of this into a common API, and I'm going to go over that today. So let's first talk about what MediaFront is. So MediaFront is an easy way for site admins to add media to their site. Um, that's, that was my very first goal with the project. Uh, it also provides a common interface for all media player instances. So my, my objective here, whenever I first uh, decided to write MediaFront, I noticed that there were a lot of third-party providers that were coming out with their own players, their own APIs, like YouTube had their own player, and if you wanted to do anything with YouTube, you had to talk in their language. If you wanted to do anything in Vimeo, you had to talk in their language. If you wanted to do anything in HTML5, you had to talk in their language. So these are these, all these different standards that you had to basically abide by. So what I decided to do is create a project that basically wraps up all of those uh, indiscrepancies and puts them into a single API. Um, and one thing that I really want to kind of drive home, and hopefully I can do that in this presentation, is that MediaFront, its goal is to become a front-end media framework for the web. That I really, it's, it's a, it's a well-architected, object-oriented project that allows anybody to extend and do some really cool stuff with. And so in that sense, it is a framework because it is plug-in based. You can do some really cool stuff with it. What, let's talk about what MediaFront is not. And this is, I get a lot of this because a lot of people think it's an all-out media solution for the web. So MediaFront is not a back-end management tool for media. It, it is not and it never will be. That is not its objective. There are plenty of other solutions that do that. It's also not an upload solution for media. It, will, it does not care how you upload. It does, not know, it does not care where the media exists. All it cares about is, I have a URL, let me figure out how to play the damn thing. That's pretty much what MediaFront is, its objective is. Um, it is not a dynamic media converter. It does not deal with conversions. If, if, you, if you want to commonize your media into a standard media format, you have to use a different solution to do that. And also the media front module is not the media module. And I mentioned that because the media module is something I want everyone to check out because the media module is solving a lot of these problems that I put here. It is, it's trying to create a, a great way to manage media and as a back-end solution for media. So with that said, media front works beautifully with the media module. In fact, I, I recommend people using those two together. So, with that said, if you want to find out more, yes? And just as a quick aside, like when he said use something else, he didn't mean don't use MediaFront, because MediaFront still works with just about anything you could possibly slot into one of those MediaFront is not ideas. So, like, if you need some sort of transcoding solution, MediaFront can still deliver your media. Yeah, it, what it does is it, is it tries its best to play it. So, if you have, if you have a media in and it falls within a range of media formats, I'm, what I'm saying is MediaFront will do its best to pick out all the technologies that it knows to try and play your media. So it, you, a lot of you might find, in fact, I have a lot of people that use MediaFront, that they say, this is all I need. I don't need anything else. So to find out more, go to MediaFront.org. I just rewrote that website. It's now much better. I rewrote it in Jekyll, so I don't have to maintain it. <laughs> Um, which I love Jekyll. Um, so, and you can also go to the Drupal.org project, MediaFront. Um, you can go to GitHub.com if you want to look at the source code. Everything that I'm about to show you is open source, GPL. There's no licenses, no nothing. It's free to use, free to fork, free to contribute. Um, and then my username on GitHub is Travis T. Um, so now let's dive into it. 